Now we're back with the second part on the use case and how to combine G ranges and uh, annotation hub. As a quick reminder, we have gotten hold of our promoters, uh, of our promoters, which is a G ranges thing. We have 50,000 promoters. We have gotten hold of our uh, histone modification peaks. We have 75,000, roughly 75,000 of those. And um, we are now going to ask, is this particular histone modification H3K4 trimethylation enriched in promoters? So to do that, we want to use, we basically want to see how often do they overlap. And the workhorse for that is find overlaps, which is a function uh, we'll use again and again. So let's ask how many promoters uh, overlap a peak. We get uh, this uh, overlap object out, but I'm really most interested in like how big a percentage of the promoters overlap. And here, as we have explained with find overlaps, we have to think about double counting. Uh, we can take the query hits, we can do a unique, so let's see a length. Let's first save the find overlaps. So this is the number of peaks that overlap length. Uh, unique because we don't want to double count query hits of prom. Oh. This is the number of uh, uh, promoters that have a peak in them and the number of peaks that have a promoter in them we get with the subject hits. I often do a little trick here. Um, I utilize that we have the convenient function called subset by overlaps, where I say out of my peaks, how many overlap a promoter. And perhaps we want to ignore strength. And then I say, what's the length of that? That's the same number as before. And then I divide that by the length of uh, the peaks. This is the percentage of peaks that overlap a promoter. Now, 30%, is that big or little? It's not 100%. Uh, it turns out, if you know a little bit more about H3K4 trimethylation, is that this histone mark doesn't just mark active promoters. It's also sometimes associated with enhancers and other regulatory elements. So 30% is perhaps pretty good, is it? Well, we have to do a little bit more analysis in order to really answer that. Let's first answer, like, how many promoters actually have a peak in them? So that requires us to slit, switch the, the promoter and the peaks. And we have to divide, divide by the length of the promoters. And we get a number which is basically 50%. That's pretty uh, 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 nice. My rule of thumb is that in any given cell type, 50% of genes are expressed. And that fits pretty well with this 50% we see here. Uh, it's probably a little bit of coincidence, but you have to accept that in many cell types, a lot of genes are not being expressed. So this histone modification should only mark active promoters, which is going to be a subset of all the promoters. Now, is this big or not? Let's look a little bit about the act. Let's look at how big are the peaks and how big are the promoters will and how big is the intersection. So let's do, uh, let's say, how many bases does uh, the peaks really cover? We ignore strand and this reduce. And uh, I want to have it in megabases. So 11 megabases. How many uh, megabases does the promoters uh, uh, cover? 62 megabases. And how big is the overlap? So here we take the uh, intersection of uh, the peaks and the promoters and we ignore the strand again. And we take sum width and divide it by a million. That seems to be wrong. I'm not divided by a million, I'm divided by 106. Three megabases. 
So all of this is like small parts of the genome, right? 11 megabases, 62 megabases, 3 megabases, but again, is it big? So uh, by the way, when I'm doing this intersect here between peaks and promoters, I don't have to call reduce on it because I know that the output of intersect is a normal I ranges. So I don't get anything out of calling reduce on it. Now, in order to do this, let's quantify the relationship between these things. And we're going to do a little, uh, uh, we're going to do a little like back of the envelope calculation that's useful, uh, but I wouldn't say it's a perfect uh, statistical answer to the question of whether or not the overlap is significant. We're going to basically say that we have 3 billion bases in the human genome. And a base can either be both in a peak and in a promoter, or it can be in a peak and not in a promoter and vice versa. Uh, and we're going to look for, is there some kind of significant enrichment here? We're not really going to do significance. Uh, we, we end up with a two by two table, um, but uh, we're going to look at the odds ratio as a strength of the association. Now let's construct our matrix, which is going to be a two by two matrix. Let's fill it up with zeros. And uh, uh, we are going to have um, the call names and the row names are going to be in and out. There are some call names. And the same thing for the row names. So now we have the matrix here ready to fill out. So in in is going to be the number of bases that are, uh, uh, that, are, um, uh, that are part of both of the things. So that's uh, really the intersect, the, the sum of the bases here we have in the, in, in the intersect command. And we've got to put that up in element 1, 1. So we're going to have uh, peaks on the rows and uh, promoters on the columns. So now I'm going to take in out 1 comma 2 and this is going to be the bases that are in peaks but not in promoters. So we can do a set diff or so it should be in the peaks not in the promoters. We need to ignore the strand. Uh, and this was as a G range so we want to have the sum of the width and again, I'm using that my set diff is a set operation, so I get a normal I ranges out of it. And uh, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to reverse peaks and promoters. So um, we can do the call sums of it in and out. And now we get. Uh, now we get the 62 million we had before, and if we do the row sums, oh, we get the 11 million we had before. Now we need to fill out the last thing, and that's really the number of bases in the human genome that is not part of any of these things. So that's really equal to, let's say the human genome is uh, 3 billion bases, and uh, we're going to subtract some of in out, uh, yeah, we can just subtract some of in out because we have a zero down in the lower right corner. So we can now, we now have a two by two table, we can compute an odds ratio for this table. Uh, normally you would be able to compute an odds ratio using uh, the Fisher test function in R which does a Fisher exact test. So the way you would do this would be Fisher.test of the in out and you want to get uh, the thing, the component called the statistic. I happen to know this. But now, because we have entries that sum up to the length of the human genome and that's bigger than the biggest integer, uh, we get an overflow problem. So now we have to compute the odds ratio by hand. Now, I always uh, get confused about that, so I have to look up on Wikipedia. Uh, but uh, Really, it's equal to the uh, uh, the product of the uh, two um, um, of the two columns divided by the uh, so let's see in out so 
this is the the the, diag the one diagonal, and this is a the uh, <coughs> so the odds ratio is a number between zero and infinity, and values greater than one means enrichment. So this here means that uh, uh, the overlap between the peaks and the promoters is like 18-fold more enriched than we would expect. Now this is actually very driven by the size of the human genome. So we just put in like a number which we said was 3 billion, and you can argue is that really the right number? So this has to do with giving a good statistical answer to this entire thing. It turns out that while the human genome has 3 billion bases, some of these bases can't be mapped using uh, short read technologies. Some of the bases haven't even been sequenced. So it's probably wrong to say that the mappable part of the human genome is 3 billion. <coughs> we can do a sensitivity analysis and see how much does this odds ratio change if we dramatically change our assumptions? So let's say that half the human genome is, um, only half the human genome is mappable. That's probably an underestimate. So let's set in and out uh, the 2.2 to be zero first, and then we say in and out 2.2 is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the 9 minus sum of in out. Okay, now we're back, but we have a much smaller genome. <coughs> Let's compute the same odds ratio. And we can see that this really uh, dramatically reduced the enrichment, but it's still much, much bigger than 1. So while uh, the size of the human genome or the mapable part of the human genome definitely has some influence on what do you want to define, what, what is the quote true odds ratio for this analysis, <coughs> it doesn't seem to change our conclusion that you have, a, you have some amount of enrichment. You would like to put a p-value on this. Uh, doing a FISA exact test like here, it turns out that because the numbers are big, everything is significant. Uh, that's kind of a problem with FISA exact test when you use it on tables with very big numbers. So this is for sure uh, very significant. But you can argue, is this even the right analysis? We are aside, we are letting each base independently uh, either belong to the peak region or the promoter region. And is that really the right model for this type of phenomena? Uh, that's probably unlikely, but I would say that this back of the envelope calculation we are doing here suggests that there is some enrichment. It may not be that the odds ratio is precise 8.9 or 18.3. Uh, it may be a different number, but there's probably some amount of enrichment happening here.